name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So today is the Feast of the Epiphany. Uh, an epiphany is a word uh, that's Greek word, or Greek root, means a revelation. Uh, and so in the Feast of the Epiphany, we celebrate a special revelation of Jesus that we have just read about in Matthew's Gospel to the three magi, to the three kings that have come from the east. Now, one of the things I want to point out is these are not Jewish kings. But they came to pay homage to a Jewish king. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes in the Christian world, I lose sight of the fact that I am rooted in the Jewish kingdom. That the Old Testament is this bizarre and wonderful world to explore that seems not my own. It's a foreign culture in many ways. It's a people that are very different from me, a product of the West. For I am an individual. I stand alone. I have free will. I make my own choices. And when I go and enter that world of Scripture in the Old Testament, I find a people that are very different from me. A people that are rooted in these family units the 12 tribes of Israel. A people that have a deep and abiding history of God being their salvation. A people that were put together by God so that all the world could be blessed. And they're founded on a promise that was given to Abraham, their father. And so in the West, and even in the Book of Common Prayer tradition, of which we are uh, uh, beneficiaries, we have often divorced the kingship of Jesus from his kingship as a Jewish Messiah. As the promised leader of Israel that would restore the people of Israel to the promises that they had in God. Now why is this important for us? Because they are our family stories. That we really cannot know Jesus, who he really is, without going deep into his family stories, and by consequence, our family stories, as Jesus as the Jewish Messiah who has been born to save all of humanity. That there is a global scope, a cosmic scope, to what he was born to do. Now for those of you that have been going through uh, the journey with me through Paul's book that N.T. Wright wrote, this is a major theme that Paul goes and he's proclaiming the gospel to the Gentiles, but he always goes to the Jewish people first. He goes to the synagogue in every place that he goes. And he proclaims the message that their hope has been fulfilled. The hope of Israel has come true. The Messiah has been revealed. Salvation has come to us. The promises of God have come to bear in Jesus Christ, who is the king that God has sent into the world. And because of this fulfillment, because the Messiah has come, all the nations will be blessed. 
All the nations are beneficiaries of the revelation of Jesus Christ to the world. Now for us, this is kind of a foreign idea. It was in the 300s or so that the church began a practice that in order to be a Christian, a Jew must first renounce their Jewish faith. And this is a strange, strange thing when you consider the scriptures and especially the writings of Paul. Where Jesus was the fulfillment of the promises of the Old Testament. And to be a Christian in that first generation of Christians, there was actually a raging debate as to whether you had to become a Jew first. And then the tables are turned within those first couple of hundred years. And the persecution of the Jewish people begins. Jews are now told that they have to renounce their Judaism before they can become Christ followers. And yet, we are knit into the promises made to the Jewish people. We are co-heirs with them of the promises of God. And for a time, God has hardened the hearts of the Jewish people so that all the world can come to faith through them and that they too can come to to believe in the graces of God, not by blood, but by faith. That we all come before God with an equal footing. So now God has knit us together under the kingship of a Jewish king. Which is kind of interesting. It's an interesting thing that has happened in the world. After all, many of the faiths of the world were tied to nationalities, to kingdoms, at the time that Jesus came. And with the revelation, revelation, the epiphany of Jesus, we see the advent of a kingdom that joins together people across these boundaries. That in Jesus Christ, there is one family because there is one Lord. This family is composed of many peoples, languages, tribes, nations, any way that you can think of to divide us in the earth. And we're good at dividing people in the earth. We love our categories. We love to see us versus them. And yet, in Christ, we are all one family. Brothers and sisters with equal standing before God. This is a revolutionary idea. This is a wonderful, wonderful thing that has happened. It's the overturning of the great divisions that happened with the Tower of Babel. It's a unification into one common people, all made in the image and likeness of God, and yet all wonderfully unique. And so we are joined together in this one family. And we celebrate this with the coming of the three kings. And now I'm going to need a little help because I'm having problems remembering the gifts that the kings brought. 
So does any, can anybody help me out and help me to remember what a gift? What was one of the gifts the kings brought? Gold. Gold, Chelsea says. Awesome. And so gold is a gift that is fit for a king. Gold is a present that was <coughs> kingly in its character. And that represents Jesus' role as the coming king. Now, what's another gift that came, Madison? Myrrh. Myrrh. That's the third gift. And myrrh is a spice that was very precious in that culture. It represents Jesus' death, his burial. He is the king who was born to die so that we all might have life. And what's the last gift? What is it? Frankincense. frankincense. We actually have frankincense in our house today. We're swinging the thurible, which is filled with frankincense. And it represents Jesus' role as the priest, as the one that communicates with God on our behalf, who makes a way to God for us and reveals God to us. Thank you very much for your assistance. You're <laughs> and so today we give thanks for the gift that has given, been given to us through the Jewish people. Jesus Christ, who has joined us together into one family. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.